Why the hell should we listen to you? Some fucking YouTuber with a Rob Zombie fecal matter infested fucking beard. And instead of like doctors and fucking nutritionists and government. I mean, they've been doing such a great job with our health over all these years. You don't know shit. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. How the hell do you possibly think that you're smarter than all these fucking experts out there? You know, I mean, what the hell? Why? Why should I listen? Listen to your fucking stupid ass, you piece of shit. Sorry, I still got a bit of a, a bug, so my voice isn't quite what it should be today. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to fucking work. I got to get work done. And believe it or not, YouTube is work, as much as some people think that it isn't. Anyways, what I wanted to talk about today was the fact that, God, I really sound like complete fucking dog shit right now. But I'm going to keep pressing on anyway, because, you know, it's important and shit. Must be my, you know, I, I, my diet must have caused me to be sick, or maybe uh, keto made me sick, or maybe the wrong person's fecal matter got deposited into my fucking beard, causing me to be sick. I don't know, but I am sick. So draw what conclusions you may from that. I'm not like bedridden sick. It's just I'm losing my voice a little sick. You know, coughing a little. Not even stuffy. It's fucking weird. What I wanted to talk about today, first I want to show you a clip from a Tom Naughton speech. Tom Naughton being the guy that made the documentary Fethead. He's a comedian. He doesn't know shit about shit apparently either. And he is attacked regularly by... Medical professions and, and, you know, scholars and experts who've been doing such a great job with public health over the past 40 years. So we should, of course, listen to them. So I'm going to open up with a clip from him and then I'm going to give you my take on the situation as usual. Or I'm going to try to. You know, this voice shit is bullshit. I don't even know if I'm going to fucking put this video out. Why are so many people who are looking for health advice turning away from the so-called experts and getting their health information from people like me or people like you? And to answer that question, I'm going to start with an old joke. Two drunks are in a bar and the bartender flips on the six o'clock news and the first thing they see is a man standing on the ledge of a ten-story building. So one drunk elbows the other and says, hey, I got twenty bucks as he jumps. The other drunk says, okay, I got 20 bucks, says he doesn't. Sure enough, boom, guy jumps. So the second drunk says, okay, I'm an honest man, here's your 20. The first drunk says, nah, I can't take your money. I've been drinking here all day, I seen him jump on the four o'clock news, I seen him jump on the five o'clock news. And the second drunk says, well, so did I, but I didn't think he'd do it again. <laughs> And that's the reason people are turning away from the experts, because for 30 some years now, they have been told to make the same bet over and over and over again, and they are tired of losing. And the bet they have been told to make looks like this. 
This is what we have all been told to do for the past 35 years or so. Does anybody think it's working? When you are at a shopping mall or an airport, do you look around and think, man, everybody looks so good these days? <laughs> no, of course not. Because the fact of the matter is, baby boomers and people my age and people younger are fatter and sicker on average than their parents and grandparents were at the same age. And that's a shame because back... And that trend is going to continue, by the way. Um, your kids and their grandkids are going to live not quite as long as you. They are going to experience more health problems than you. They are going to have more, you know, a higher body fat percentage than you, unless we write the ship. And that's what we are doing as a community. Back in the 60s, this is what the baby boomers looked like. And if you take away their wacky clothes and hairdos, that is what their parents looked like. And that is what their grandparents looked like. These people looked pretty good. And statistically, we know that type 2 diabetes was a lot less common then than it is now. So we have to think these people were doing something right. So, what were the official dietary guidelines they were all following back then? They weren't. What we had back then was the dietary version of a phenomenon described in a lovely book called The Wisdom of Crowds. So, I, you know, the bottom line there is... Ever since we established these dietary guidelines and thought that we were smarter than all the generations before us, than the primitive aboriginal tribes and all of these other cultures, which were a lot healthier in terms of chronic disease than we, we were, you know, not necessarily in terms of infectious disease, but they weren't getting diabetes, they had better teeth, they weren't obese, they weren't having heart disease, they weren't having asthma, they weren't having all of these fucking problems that plague Western society today. And it makes you wonder, why can't we snap the fuck out of it? And I can tell you, it's it's nothing more than money and pride that is keeping us locked into this same stupid fucking advice that we've been giving the public for the past 40 years that just has not worked. It didn't work. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that it didn't fucking work. And your solution is to double down. And to silence people that have discovered something that has that is working. I sound like a fucking 80-year-old man right now. <clears throat> mm. <coughs> and the reason I bring this up is three days ago, the Australian Medical Association came out against a documentary. By the way, the link to that Tom Naughton video is in the description. I highly recommend watching that lecture because it makes sense and it is an exact prediction i would say since it was it's an older video but it was it's an exact description of what's going on right now and this is gets into what i'm about to to talk about um the australian medical association in this article here which is linked down below is trying to silence people like us. And I've noticed it starting to become a thing where experts are attacking bloggers, vlo vloggers, and make no mistake, this is only like the first shots in this, this battle to come um, for the hearts and minds and wallets of all of you. Because if you start listening to each other the way we did back in the 20s, back in the 50s, if we start figuring out for ourselves how to be help, healthy without the pharmaceutical industry and without letting the food industry cash in on our addictions, 
if we start to do all that, a lot of people with big ass fucking houses are going to have to move to little ass houses. A lot of people that have careers built on our sickness and death are going to have to find something else to do for a living. And a lot of scientists and government officials who want you to listen to every fucking thing they say are going to have to say they were wrong. And that is probably the biggest thing standing in the way is nobody wants to admit they're wrong because then you'll never fucking listen to them again. And that might even be a true story. So I guess we need new motherfuckers that are smart and can tell us as experts what to do that are giving us correct information instead of the bullshit of the last 40 years. And that's why my channel is growing. That is why keto has become more popular. That is why people are going in to educate their doctors instead of the other way around. That is why we are trying to find alternatives to pharmaceutical solutions. And when you add in the medical costs and the impact of our shitty insurance deductibles and our poor you know, healthcare system, which is just overburdened with our lack of health. And if we were to fix our health, we would make a huge dent in the health care issue. You know, ask anybody that's having health issues, thousands of dollars out the fucking window. And a lot of people don't have thousands of dollars to throw out the window. They're living paycheck to fucking paycheck. You want them to spend $1,000 a month on insulin or $300 a month on this pill or $400 a month on that pill because the pill itself was $1,000 and insurance only paid for part of it? When you can probably fix it with nutrition. But then them people charging you $1,000 a pill, they're not making money anymore. So you think they're just going to take this shit and say, oh, well, <laughs> yeah, I guess the diet works. Let me stop making all this fucking money now. Let's, let's get rid of my yacht and my fucking big ass house with fucking seven bedrooms and four shitters because you can go down to the grocery store and fix this shit. And it's frustrating as fuck because I see it all around me. There's multiple people I give a shit about that are dealing with this. And, you know, whenever a doctor or a medical institution lashes out against this movement, I want to be there to say fuck you. And today I want to say fuck you to the Australian Medical Association. I invite you all to do the same thing. So Australian Medical Association, this one's for you. Now, they came out, and I read, this is from three, three days ago, they came out on this story, but it's been an ongoing thing for over a year since the documentary came out. And if you don't have Netflix, the link to this is in the description. The, the documentary is called The Magic Pill. It is a very well-produced documentary about the ketogenic diet and its active use. And they show in this documentary some anecdotal evidence, and it is anecdotal evidence, of how the ketogenic diet can help you overcome some pretty serious problems. Diabetes. They had one of the people in the documentary was a diabetic on heavy amounts of insulin, spending a thousand dollars a month on insulin in tears at the beginning of it. By the end of the documentary, she was off all blood medication for diabetes. Her health improved, her energy improved, her cognition improved. Same documentary, kid with autism. Eating the worst fucking diet. And, and consequently, I want to comment on this. This is almost a partial review of The Magic Pill. Great documentary. Um, but they were feeding this kid what I see parents all around me doing because they don't want to combat 
the the temper tantrum and the addiction that their kid is going to have to withdraw from if they were to change their diet. And to see this barely functioning autistic child improve dramatically just by switching their diet was phenomenal. Now, we're not talking about curing autism here, but we are talking about a hell of a lot more progress with a hell of a lot less medication. One of those medications that child was on was $300 a month after the deductible. And the child went from not saying a word to, you know, at first refusing to eat for like six days. The kid just would just throw the food. <laughs> And that was that. After a while, and after encouragement by everybody sitting down and eating together and always eating the same foods and always enjoying them, finally the kid joined in and now loves the stuff. The addiction passed in six days. Stubborn as fuck for those six days. And as that child went on, became less, you know, all over the place, not jumping, bouncing off the walls, not able to concentrate more, able to start learning, beginning to use words. And, you know, there was another autistic child they pointed out. So there is definitely research that needs to be done with ketogenic diet. Also, consequently, keto has always been known to reduce the risk of seizures, and this child was on anti-seizure medication. And so the ramifications of the diet in regards to autism, I feel like the medical industry is going to be like, oh, fuck, you know, because we're already set up the, the next 25 years. One in three people is going to be autistic. So that's a pretty big cash cow till people can't work anymore. But in any case, you know, <sighs> You're you're talking about the pharmaceutical industry and the, and the medical industry losing millions, if not billions of dollars. If we figure out amongst ourselves through our crowd wisdom, through us sharing what works and what doesn't amongst ourselves the way we used to do it, we that is how we are going to fix this and. And, it, and it's already happening. People are already telling their doctors, look, I'm going to do it this way. You're either on board or I need another doctor. You know, the business model of doctors is going to change in the coming years if it hasn't even started to change already. So the more and more we figure out what works and what doesn't, the more and more of these people with vested financial interests who are too prideful to admit that they were wrong. Maybe that's not a complete greed thing. Maybe it is also uh, they just don't want to admit that they were wrong. So Netflix puts out this documentary and the Australian Medical Association, once again, fuck you to them, comes out and asks Netflix to take it down. So their solution is censorship. And it's, it's almost a, a, like a clear move to suppress good, indisputable information. And that, you know, in the documentary, they bring up multiple studies which show proof that this diet is effective. They also, in The Magic Pill, address cancer. And the current research and anecdotal evidence on the ketogenic diet helping fighting cancer, preventing it from growing. And we're talking strict keto there. Um, the lady that was in the documentary, you know, straight up was on 20 grams or less per day. You know, that's damn near Carno levels. Clearly not Carno, though. She was making some recipes and shit. So, you know, and, and if you look at it, it's not an isolated incident. If you look at the Tim Noakes case where they took his ass and put him on trial, 
for not only saying that everyone is being wrong about nutrition and that we need to do something about it, but for telling somebody that, you know, children should be weaned onto low carb, high fat diet. That was what started it on Twitter. I don't know why anybody posts on fucking Twitter anymore. It just leads to all bad shit happening to you. Why do we even bother with Twitter? Name to me one person who's benefited from being on Twitter, who's who's having a good life without any controversy at all because they post on Twitter. In any case, you're getting these experts attacking non-experts or assholes like me. You know, thinking that we, because, you know, they're being defensive because people are losing faith in their expertise. You know, when people start losing weight without going to a personal trainer, what do you think the personal trainer is going to say? When people fix their health and nutrition and diet without going to speak to a dietitian, what do you think the dietitian's going to say? And when people fix their health without having to go to their doctor and hospital and without having to get thousands of dollars worth of pills, what do you think those institutions are going to say? How do you think they're going to respond? Do you think they're going to be like, oh, well, that's good. I'm glad you did that. Good luck to you. Do you you honestly think that's what they're doing here? Because it looks to me like something completely fucking different. It looks to me like, oh, shit, we can't have this. We need to fucking shut that shit down. Call Netflix. We need to get them to take that shit off the air. We can't afford to have this kind of bullshit out there. It's dangerous. You want to know who it's dangerous for? Rich motherfuckers that are taking advantage of sick, dying people. That's who it's dangerous for. We're talking about going back to a way of eating that we always had, that we lived off of for millions of years. It wasn't until we started fucking around with that, with agriculture and industrialization, that we really fucked that up. And now we're trying to tell you, hey, all this dumb shit we've been doing over the past couple hundred years, or particularly some of the shit we've been doing for over the last 8,000 years, that's another um, debate we'll have in another video. But, you know, even if you just raised your hand and said, okay, 100 years ago, we weren't as dumb. So we need to go back to that for now. You know, we weren't perfect then either, but we were fucking a hell of a lot better than we are now. And there's no willingness to do that on a lot of these institutions. Now, I'm not speaking in a blanket statement. There are doctors and experts and scientists who many of whom we all follow in this community as we share our knowledge who have stepped off of that box, realized we've been fucking up, and have come up with solutions to get us back to health. And if we ignore those outlying experts in favor of the institutionalized medicine, the government guidelines, all of which are not going to stand up and say, whoops, I'm sorry we killed millions of you with our dietary fucking guidelines. Hold on while we just, uh, you know, they're not going to do that. Just imagine the lawsuits if they admitted they were wrong. There's a lot of damage there. And I'm really surprised the class action lawsuit hasn't started popping up yet. Surprised the lawyers aren't all over that. There's a lot of money to be had there. You're talking about suing really, really billion dollar industries. You know, just saying it's a possibility. But they're not going to admit that they're wrong. So we can't put as much faith in them, but they're noticing. They're noticing that we're not putting as much faith in them and they're going to fight back much like they did with Tim Noakes, much like the Australian Medical Association is trying to silence Pete Evans. And, you know, apparently it's big news in Australia. If you're from Australia, you probably know all about this shit. But it's not an isolated thing. And how do you think that battle's going here in the United States? How do you think the medical experts are doing? I see a whole lot of propaganda. I see a whole lot of stuff in the media 
that contradicts and attacks the ketogenic diet. That is, condemning fasting's been under attack lately. It's like they jump back and forth to these things, and they're like, this is bad. Meanwhile, these are things that we've been doing for millions of years. Millions, with a fucking M, all right? And suddenly, we're smarter than that. We can't possibly be wrong. It's a, it's a fucking shame. It really is. And it's killing us. It, it's, it's really destroying us. And if we don't right the ship, and I believe we're making headway in that, then we're going to go down with it. So how can we right the ship? That becomes the question. Well, if you're watching this, you've already started. You've already started educating yourself. Learn not from just the experts and be very choosy on which experts you learn from. But also learn from the people who have conquered these illnesses and how they did it. Learn from what diets worked long term. Learn to what stopped hunger. And when your body's doing its job, you're not hungry. If you're hungry all the time, you're doing something wrong. You know, <sighs> these are the things we have to do and communicate with everyone you can. Anyone you think is needs a little help. Now, people are resistant to that because they're addicted to these foods. And that's a whole other issue to tackle, how to break that food addiction. But it is a legit thing. And I see it all the time in the comments and in, in messages that I get that it's really hard to stick with a ketogenic diet because of the addiction of processed foods and sugar and carbs. And it's a real thing. And I'm from personal experience. It takes a long time of abstaining from those things before you, like that little girl in the magic pill who at first was like, Nope, give me the fucking goldfish. Give me the fucking apple juice. Fuck this meat and fat shit. You can shove that right up your ass. Go get me my goldfish, bitch. You know, that went from that to, um, yeah, more. And that's exactly what I have done. And a lot of you have managed to do as well. And, you know, that's what we have to do. We have to help people, help, or help people around us overcome those addictions and share the information. Because maybe we get a little bit wrong here or there with diet and fasting there's more to come on the fasting front there's more bullshit going on in fasting but at the very least the ketogenic diet i am 100 percent convinced is the healthiest diet because it's way the way we were designed to eat it's what we've been doing before agriculture now vegans love to say oh no we were gathering shit i see very little evidence in that in terms of human history we were always hunter-gatherer societies with a heavy emphasis on the hunter part. Gathering was what supplemented the time when we couldn't hunt. But no matter what climate you were in, even the tropical climates, you were gathering meat. You were eating meat and fat. Because fat is very calorically dense. And the stuff that you gather is not calorically dense. And we have a very energy-intense brain that requires a lot of calories. Just sitting on your ass. Not to mention the physical shit you had to do to survive back then. So we needed something with dense calories. You think fruit was edible fucking all 365 days a year? Which would be the only calorie-dense plant would be fruit. Lots of it. You get that once a year if you're lucky. And, but yet, you know, we, got, we eat it all the time. It's fucking healthy and shit. Go down to Walmart and get you all the fucking bananas you can eat all year, all the time. Really? You think that's how we're supposed to eat that? And every time we depart from the path that nature set us on, in terms of food, in terms of getting away from leaving the land alone and getting food from that land versus doing all of this crap to the land and then putting these monoculture crops on it and then taking those fucking shitty ass crops and feeding them to animals but and just shy of them dying we kill them and eat them because they can't eat grain for longer than 60 days i think it is before they drop dead there's a fact for you something to think about when you eat that grain fed shit you're getting it right before it fucking died anyway
in all of these arguments, it really boils down to the wisdom of crowds that Tom Naughton discussed in that video. So I highly recommend watching that. Watch the magic pill. That If you want to say fuck you to these medical motherfuckers, watch that movie on Netflix. Let Netflix know that you're behind that, that they stood by that, that they kept, even though they do keep vegan movies too, but we won't hold that against them. You know, but I'm not about silencing the vegans. Let them talk their shit, you know? It gives me material. But if you want to go a step further, in the description are a couple of Amazon links to the Magic Pill so you can watch it, you know, rent it or purchase it via Amazon and show your support to them and me at the same time because that's an affiliate link. And that's, you know... That's how you start to let these experts know that if they do not change that tune, that fucking food pyramid, plants and fucking carbs are the way to go and meats and fats are bad for you dogma bullshit that they're doubling down on by trying to push us into a more plant-based you know, what happens when we don't want to eat grain anymore? Because in my book, grain's not a food either. Another debate you know what happens when we get away from all of that you know the experts need to change their tune or they're going to get left behind we are in an age where you and i can communicate without a problem over vast global amounts of fucking space you know, I have people watching me in the UK. I have people watching me in just about every country. You know, countries I couldn't imagine somebody watching my fucking face talking in front of a fucking green screen somewhere are watching. And then they're telling people. And then they're telling people. And that is the wisdom of crowds. Versus the one motherfucker who read the one study that was epidemiology saying, hey, this increases your risk by 4%, but we're going to say it doubles your risk because it used to be 2%. You know, and then we follow that fucker's guidelines because they have this big megaphone, you will follow my shit or you will fucking die. Versus so many of us who have accumulated knowledge from all corners of the world, from all different cultures. And have said, hey, there seems to be a common way that we've survived for millions of years. Maybe we should do that. I don't know. It's really up to you. And I'm sorry, this video probably sucked because my voice is off. And that's throwing me off that I can't fucking talk the way I normally want to talk. So I, I hope that you were able to tolerate this video. But I do still feel it was appropriate to get it out in a timely manner. So go ahead and check out The Magic Pill. Go ahead and check out Tom Naughton's video. And let me know what you think in the comments. Engagement helps. But what the fuck do I know, really? I'm not an expert. I'm one of the many of you doing this. And don't live in an echo chamber. Listen to the other viewpoints and you'll find commonalities in all of them. Biggest commonality is don't eat processed foods right now. Vegans and, and ketos and paleos and Mediterranean motherfuckers can probably all agree that processed foods and sugar are bad. And there's a little bit of arguing on the grain front. You'll f it's finding those commonalities which will eliminate all of these problems in our diet. And like I said, the further away from nature that we get, the further away from the way we used to eat that we get, the worse our health is going to get, the more problems we're going to have all preventable and it's going to cost you time time that is precious because you're going to have to spend time making money to pay the pharmaceutical industries you're going to have to spend time to pay your deductibles for your medical costs when you have to go to the er all the time when you have to get surgery when you have kidney failure or fucking you know diabetes or diabetic nephropathy and you know all this other bullshit that can happen to you or you get cancer and you get you know there's just so much that you lose in quality of life that could be prevented if you just eat the way we were supposed to eat, the way we used to eat. 
Now, there's other concerns that I understand, the economic concerns. That is probably the only argument against this way of eating in my book that holds any water, and that's feeding the population whole foods. Can it be done? Yes, but it would require a systematic change of the way we produce food, away from the industrial agriculture chemically laced fucking GMO to death bullshit that we currently do into an organic farming let the land do its job model which the magic pill goes over so like I said that's a good documentary and I recommend it please like and subscribe for more shit and I'll make all kinds of shit and shit if you found this video helpful and enlightening in any way Please, go ahead, head to scottthetruckdriver.com, leave a tip in the tip jar, and I would be thankful and grateful and be able to do, spend more time making videos and less time doing my other gigs, which I do have quite a few gigs to do this week. Before we go, I've been promising to do one email per video, and this message came to me today. This message comes from Sean, who donated via scottthetruckdriver.com. And when you do that, it gives you an optional message box that you can write. I get all of those, believe it or not. And I do read them, and I do try and get to as many as I can. But like I said, I'm one man, so it's hard to get to all of them. But today, this jumped out at me, and I wanted to add it to today's video. Hey Scott, here's a little money for the cause. I would like to make a statement and get your thoughts on it. Who says that low metabolism is a bad thing? Have you ever watched Lauren Lockman, and I have, on YouTube? He's a fasting guru. For those of you who don't know, he runs a fasting retreat, if I remember right. He looks almost emaciated when you see him. Um, it's, you know, and it's interesting, but he does have experience with people doing long extended water fasts he has a fasting center in costa rica he has stated that a high metabolism is a quicker way to death and if you think about it when you go to that rat study where when you calorically restricted the rats by 50 percent that they lived 50 percent longer that kind of is along those that line of thinking that you will live longer if you are calorically restricted um, could be a true story, but we're going to get to my response in a second. You are burning through energy instead of conserving it. No one ever says that low metabolism is a good thing. Makes you think if the people of the Bible lived to be 500 years old, I would bet it would was because they ate 2,000 calories. Well, I don't know anybody who lived to be 500 years old. Because they ate 2,000 calories a week instead of 2,000 calories a day. That's pretty low. And it's already been tried, the Minnesota starvation experiment. And this is going to be why a low metabolism is a bad thing. We'll get to it in a minute. I'll just finish your, your message. There are people who believe that a long life go hand in hand with calorie restriction. Just something to think about. Didn't mean to get all biblical and shit. And like I just said, the Minnesota starvation experiment did exactly that. Gave them 1,800 calories a day, which was under and exercised them on top of that. And they started to, they were ravished by hunger. Their metabolism tanked. They had no energy. They started to become mentally obsessed with food and mentally ill, eventually gnawing on their own bodies in some cases. That's the level of debilitation that they experienced. Make no mistake, when your body's slowing shit down, it's not doing so because it's a healthier state of being. It's doing so so you don't fucking die. And there is a floor to how much it can slow down. And if you go below that, you're really, really fucked. But it can't, you know, continuously keep you there without consequence. And you, some of the other symptoms that come with that slow metabolism are reduced energy expenditure, reduced body heat, you're colder, easier, a lot colder. You have a low 
get up and go. You know, you don't want to move around a lot. You don't want to exercise and you'll do everything that you can to justify not exercising. You're just and your mental clarity goes right the fuck out the window. All the while, your hunger levels start to skyrocket. And you just can't function as a normal human being in that state for very long. That's why most diets fail eventually. Most of these calorie restriction diets, they end in plateau because the metabolic rate dropped. And then people drop off of it because they can't handle the hunger anymore. Or they have the energy crisis and they can't exercise anymore. You know, they'll have other excuses for it. But when it comes down to it, they tank their metabolism by doing eat less, move more. And they can't go to the gym anymore because they don't have the energy to. They don't feel like it. And it's their body's way of tricking them into saying, hey, we can't do that. Are you nuts? We fucking lost all this fat. So while it may be scientifically true that if you were to burn so many less calories a day, you might live X amount longer. The quality of that life would be fucking miserable. You would be hungry all the time. You would be have no energy to do shit. And you wouldn't feel like exercising. You would probably waste away in terms of atrophy and muscle. Your body would be consuming lean mass during all of this. And that's been scientifically proven through the last couple of talks we've gone over um, over the past week. So to, to answer your question, is it a bad thing to burn 500 less calories a day because you fucked your metabolism? And that is a resounding yes, it's a bad thing um, for those reasons. It's not where we're designed to be. Our body is designed for energy balance. And we aren't healthy and we're not going to feel good and we're not going to be able to concentrate and we're not going to have enough energy to do things if we do not stay in that balanced state. If we're constantly tanking the metabolism, it's going to have consequences and they're not a, a good quality of life. And while you might potentially live longer, that quality of life is going to be complete shit. Um, I myself would not want to live any longer if I was hungry all the time, if I didn't have any energy, if I couldn't think. And these are all symptoms of a slowed metabolism. If I needed 20 naps a day, you know, it's so that's that's what my thoughts are on that. So I would disagree with Lauren Lockman there. So that's it for today. It's probably it for this week because I'm feeling under the weather. I was going to do a live stream, but I don't want, I'm miserable with the fact that I'm losing my voice right now. So see y'all next time and have a nice motherfucking day. And shit. This video is a fucking nightmare. Like I've fucking up all the time. It's, this is just a shitty fucking video. I don't know why anybody watches me. They should go watch all these fucking food pyramid experts out there who apparently know how to fix our health. Oh, and Australian Medical Association? I forgot. I almost forgot.